Okay. Um, good morning. Um, good afternoon. Good evening from wherever you are on the planet. I'm super excited about the opportunity to um, bring about one of my flagship revelations um, on such an auspicious day, the seventeenth day of the seventh month now in my, in my work of god i have by um the um the, the the spirit of interpretation do i call it a gift or a spirit or i just say by interpretation i have come to recognize that today stands out as one of um, the most pivotal days in god's agenda for the gentile nation um, we have come to an interesting um, transition season in God's um, agenda and then um, um, I'd, I'd like to <clears throat> have us embrace it just as God wills that we do it um, um, it's such an incredible thing it's such an incredible thing to realize that God has our path mapped out according to scriptures he has had our lives mapped out um i'll be going through um scriptures today mm. let's just have this first few minutes worshiping yes yes father draw me Draw me nearer to the beauty of your name. Mm. I will wait for you, Almighty God, in the beauty of your holy name. Hmm. I will worship you, Almighty God, in the beauty of your own Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Father, for your your light, your revelation. Thank you for the opportunity to just repent. The opportunity, the opportunity to repent, rethink on revelation that you have given to us. I just celebrate you today for we are your workmanship. We are created in Christ Yeshua unto good works which you had ordained that we should walk in them thank you for the grace that you have given us to walk in prophetic scriptures thank you for giving us the grace the opportunity the right to be this scripture fulfilling generation i just celebrate you i just give you thanks I just love on you, Father, because your thoughts towards us are not thoughts of evil, they are thoughts of good to give us a hope and a future. Thank you for remembering us, for availing us the opportunity to be a part of you, to be one with you, to be reconciled to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes, it was the psalmist who said, Thy word is light unto my path and lamp unto my feet. He was not mincing word when he made that deeply insightful statement. The word of God spoken ages ago has become a light to our path, a lamp unto our feet. That means the word actually... Um, clears out a pattern a pathway that we must walk in <clears throat> the
Beloved, if you have become this individual who um, has the word as a, 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 a GPS directioning or director, you want to um, hold yourself privileged, fortunate, loved by the Father to delineate or mark out our path. And that's exactly what I'm enjoying today. And um, it is what has given me the impetus to come again today, this 17th day of July. Very important day. It's actually the day of rest for who have come to um, recognize as some of the most fortunate breed of individuals. I'm talking about the uh, prophetic generation. I'm talking about the holy nation. I'm talking about the ecclesia, the church among the nations. It's become very important for us to recognize who God has made us and how the inheritance that he has promised is ours. Beloved, I want you to recognize that much of what we are about is um, strategically called out of scripture. God actually gave us a, a platform to stand on. And I've come to realize that this is what the church in the Gentile nations, this is what they enjoy. The, this is what the church in the Gentile nation, this is what we enjoy. Let me not sound as, as though I am not a part of this body. <clears throat> I'll be reading from Genesis chapter 8. I'll read the first five verses. Um, thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Light and revelation is what you receive here today in the name of the Lord Yeshua. And God, come, God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters are switched. We're looking at Noah um, um, following the instruction of the father to uh, build an ark. Basically, um, remember it becomes important when uh, the Lord Yeshua tells us that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. So it is only important for us to go back to the days of Noah to find um, right interpretation of what God is planning to do. God actually has plans to do this end time. But we are looking at the life of Noah as a symbol for this plan. Yes, we see that these people have been in the ark for quite a while. Somehow the ark was drifting in the sea of nothingness because water had covered the entire earth. But this time the scripture tells us that God remembered Noah. God remembered Noah and every living thing and the cattle that was with him in the ark. And then he made a wind to pass over the earth. There was a Passover in the days of Noah. I also want to believe that there is a Passover now. He made a wind pass over the earth and then the waters are switched. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were spotted, were stopped, I beg your pardon, and the rain from heaven was restrained. Now, God caused the rain, that destructive rain, to stop. Very important here. The rain stopped because God had opened his people into a new era. In the days of Noah, we also come to recognize that God has plans to bring a siege upon the earth, but not by water this time. But can we just keep going? And the waters returned from the earth continually. And after the end of 150 days, the waters were abated. Now, this, this, this is the punchline. And the ark rested in the seventh month. The ark rested. That's some form of Sabbath for the ark. The ark rested in the seventh month. On the seventeenth day of the month. The ark rested in the seventh month. On the 17th day of the month such a critical timing 
that we see there. The ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month. So, for the for those who follow the the Gregorian calendar, we are seeing that something um, important, something critical happened on July seventeenth. The seventeenth day of the seventh month was when the ark rested on the mountains of Ararat. The ark, I want you to capture this prophetic picture. The ark symbolizing the mountain of the, the Lord's house. The ark symbolizing the, the Lord's house rested. There's something about rest on the 17th day of July. And I'm, I'm, I'm bringing out this interpretation to have us see that God has a plan to activate Sabbath on this day. Activation of Sabbath means the... Um, the plan to cause many people to come into Christ. The plan to get a harvest for himself. And when I mean harvest, I mean the harvest that will establish the Lord's house as the most important place in the world. You, all, you understand in Isaiah chapter um, 2, verse um, 1 to 3, Scripture tells us that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established at the tops of the mountains. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be the most important place on the earth, and it shall um, um, be <clears throat> it shall be highest, exalted above the mountains, and all nations shall flow into it. In this my book, I made um, it um, expedient to to draw out this um, this um, um, was it. Um, in this illustration of this day is a prophetic day and that's what we have there that's the ark and that's the mountains of Ararat so somehow by the by the anointing the Lord taught me to draw this um, picture this picture actually shows something quite powerful in every sense of the word it shows the picture of God's end time strategy for the church and today becomes very important, July 17, because that's when the ark, the, the, the mountain of the Lord's house, as, as the case is now, is established on the mountains of Ararat. So we're seeing the, the waters recede, the waters recede, and then the ark finds its place, the ark finds its place of rest on the mountain of Ararat. That place of rest is a very important place. The place of rest is a very important place because that's the place that um, the word begins to find expression. And that place of rest is of utmost importance because that's the place that the father wants his sheep to stay in. In Psalm 23, we see that uh, it's the Lord that does all the job. The Lord is my shepherd. Uh, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He, he restores my soul. He, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil, for he is with me. His rod and his staff comforts me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Such an important realm that God has brought his beloved into. It's the realm of rest. Because once in this realm, we find out that we have rights. We have rights to guidance and protection. We have right to, to provision. We have right to... Um, 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 re recovery, restoration. We have right to be led on the path of righteousness. We have right to be led on the path of glorification and exaltation. We have right to go, to elevate, to be elevated on this earth. And that's what God actually tells us we, we, we have a right to. These are not things we pray about because we have a faithful God who is our Father who understands how to love on his children and expose or give the children what they have uh, been entitled to. Is our entitlement guidance and protection. Is our entitlement a rare dimension of 
courage. Yet though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil. That's your right. On this place, the Lord's house, being the Lord's house, being God's final habitation, being this Lord's house that God has been planning to, or he has been building, this tabernacle of David, this is the place that God has called us into. And on a day like this, he is um, reiterating the importance for a people to come into this, this dimension. It's a dimension that God will deliver his end time job on. It's a dimension of Zion. And that's what God wants people to populate at this time so that he can become a do a a a a a, a, a he, he can become more like a, a dweller. God wants to dwell inside people now. He wants to dwell inside people and give them these rights and privileges as members of his family. This is the ministry of reconciliation that God has called us into. The, the call is setting, is calling out people from all over the world to come and become his house so that he can demonstrate the, the extent of his plan through these ones. As he's demonstrating the extent of his plan to have his will done on the earth, he is giving you things that is that is rightfully yours. He's giving you, ah my goodness, he's causing you to possess your inheritance. He's causing you to walk in the rights that he has given to sons. My God, my God. So you, so you see how important July 17 is. It's a day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Pure salvation, where you will stop living in your own might where you will be in rest. Do you remember the Lord when he was making this reconciliatory call? He said, Come all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's a global call made by a king. And you see, as, as um, we are saying it on individual grounds, we also want to make this statement on a national ground. God, on July 17, is calling all nations to cease from their labor. He's calling all nations to cease from their struggling. He's calling the people of all nations to cease from iniquity, the walking on the path of iniquity. And he's calling all nations to come into the rest that he gives. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What is he talking about his yoke? He's talking about his anointing. The Lord is talking about his interpretation of government. His interpretation of governance is telling the nations of this world, today, July 17, you know, I've left rest for you on the tops of Mount Ararat. And I want you to take my yoke. I want you to embrace my righteousness so that you will find rest for your soul. You have been looking for good government. You have been looking for freedom from your persecutions, freedom from your pestilence, freedom from corruption, freedom from graft, freedom from nepotism, racism, all the secularization absurdities that has brought the nations to her knees. You have been struggling to exist amongst all of this as a nation through bloodshed, wars, greed, avarice, corruption, you have been struggling like Abraham. The Lord is giving a call. Come, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Come, Nigeria. You have been laboring with democracy. You have been laboring with, with Christianity. You have been laboring with all the excesses of yourself. Come, I will give you rest. There is a plan in the end time to demonstrate the rest of God from the mountain of the Lord's house. There is a plan for all nations to flow into the mountain of the Lord's house. Nigeria, find your place in this search. Find your place in this quest to come up to the mountain of the Lord of the house of Jacob so that you will learn the ways of righteousness. Ah, my goodness. So that Zion will instruct you. Nigeria, there is a call for you today. Don't even plan 
to spend one more hour running after degenerate politicians. However, they have branded themselves. Don't try again because all you have tried to seek for government in your own might has failed. Nigeria's problem is a problem of sin and self. No good government can solve this problem. No human democratic government can solve this problem. Nigeria needs the repentance that Lord Yeshua Hamashiach has called for. Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is the only place where any nation can find rest. July 17 makes it a, a beautiful time to preach this message. It's the best time for you to find rest. Rest from the torment of the enemy. Rest from the plumage of your resources. Rest from the, the, the body, the yoke, the yoke of self and sin. Rest from the consequences of your um, investment in carnality. This is the call that God has made. And that's why he has established today for the mountain of the Lord's house to be defined. That's it. Genesis chapter 8 verse 4. And I'm giving this revelation upon interpretation that I've received by the anointing. The Lord defines the posture of his end time church. Do you see the posture of the end time church? That's the Lord's house. And that's the house that the devil is afraid that the father will build. The Lord plans to build the, the latter house. The Lord plans to restore the tabernacle of David. The Lord plans to reinstate the position of his spirit in the hearts of men. That's why there's so much embargo in all the world. We have experienced some debilitating seasons. Two and a half years of COVID-19 that has reset the world. It has brought everybody to a state of agitation. Governments have been shaken. Now, um, they are complain about uh, uh, a post-COVID-19 food shortage that uh, is expected to go about the world. You see, from the last two and a half years, it has been from one turmoil, one trouble to another. Government have, um, um, government have, many governments have folded up. Many um, governments have changed hands. We found the uh, recent, um, um, how do I put it now, the, the recent uh, re res resignation of the kingmakers, I mean, the Prime Minister of the UK, who have found resignation, who have found assassination. So much economic activities, political activities has shook the, the nations of the earth post-COVID-19. That's an indication that the nations need to find their rest. God has given rest to the Gentile nations, especially as the era of the Western Antichrist, the era of the Anglo-Americans has come to an end. God has given nations who naturally will be facing agitations. He has given them a call to enter his rest. And what is this rest? The mountain of the Lord's house. What is this rest? God's spirit inside you. The spirit of God must find his final habitation inside the hearts of men so that our bodies must become, I didn't say may become, I say must become, the temple of God so that God will live in us and brand his son. The plan is to manifest his son, and his son is the product of the Spirit of God in the heart of men. Once your, your body has become this temple, you have found your rest. And this goes for all and sundry. Everybody, Jews, Gentile, tall, short, black, red, um, Asian, and Portuguese, Spanish, and South American, Canadian, Americans, um, Africans, Ghanaians, Congolese, um, people from um, uh, Fiji Island, people from uh, the Caribbean, uh, people from uh, um, uh, Arabia. I'm talking about people from China. God's ultimate plan is to lodge his spirit in the hearts of men so that he can typify, brand, and present, manifest his son, the one that he is himself, rest for man. God has given us rest. What must we do now? We must repent from trying to make it on our own. We must repent from trying to struggle to achieve this. And then we must embrace his rest. Beloved, I am talking from experience. I've experienced the Lord's rest. 
and um, um, I, I want to celebrate um, Auntie Aime Kadiri for um, joining. She's known my story. She's known our story. How that um, life brought us to a brink. And, uh, God actually gave us the opportunity to embrace rest. Listen, there's a purpose in your pain. Your pain must bring you to a place where you will surrender and embrace God's offer. God actually causes pain to be ministry to us. God causes misery, mourning to be ministry to us, to bring us to the brink. Because he operates and uh, he works with the broken hearted. He actually brought us to that place so that he will cause his rest to be received by us. When you embrace his rest, you cease from your labor. And then the Lord, your God, begins to do the work. Psalm 23 is what today is about. Today is about Psalm 23. The mountains of the Lord's house and the Lord's house upon it. The ark rested on the mount of Hararat. Why did this happen? Why do I give this interpretation? Why am I giving this interpretation? Because it's the will of God. The Father told us that each time we gather, let me get to that scripture. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. Very important in scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I'm using a hard Bible here because I have the other Bible. Mm, thank you, Father. Glory. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. He said, How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation, there is an interpretation. It's an interpretation of the times. And this is the interpretation. From Genesis chapter 8 verse 4, we recognize that there is rest for us. And God wants people to come and be the fulfillment of this scripture. Because he has foreordained us as his workmanship. To walk in these scriptures today, we must be this prophetic generation. All things will be done unto a divine to instruct the people of God on how to posture themselves. It's an instruction that causes the people of God to know what is important and how they should position themselves. The biggest Agenda this time is what happens from the tops of the mountains. The tops of the mountains is Mount Zion. Mount Zion, Mount Zion. What happens on the tops of the mountain? Let me tell you why the rest actually comes. The rest comes from much incredible job that God wants to do from the tops of the mountain. He's still locked away in, in, in Genesis chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 2. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, this is what the Lord is saying. The word of Isaiah, the son of Amos, the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house, we are going back to the Lord's house again, shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. There is an agenda from the tops of the mountains. This is why by interpretation, the Lord is showing us a graphic picture from Genesis chapter 8. This graphic picture the Lord is showing us. You see it? The mountain of the Lord's house. That's it right there. That's a graphic picture that the Lord wants us to see. And by interpretation, He's telling us that this is His plan, these end times. 
What must we do? We must be the ones that have made it a point of duty to walk in these scriptures. We all know body, any explanation. We all know religious system, any explanation. Because, you see, we have been called to walk in these scriptures. This is our inheritance. And if we embrace this, we embrace every other right and privilege that the Father gives to people who are his sons. <laughs> okay. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord's house. To the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Do you see the, the job? Zion is going to be the instructor of nations. And this is why the Lord is calling people into this place of rest. This place of rest is itself Zion. Operating under a new priesthood, the Melchizedekian order of priesthood. Are you with me? And God actually plans that he will instruct nations from out of these mountains. From out of this mountain, God wants to instruct nations. By the time his spirit finds expression on inside people, his final dwelling place, he begins to brand, manifest his son. That itself is the manifestation of sons of God. And through this manifestation, he is going to instruct nations. Here is what he will do. Here is what he is going to instruct nations on. And he shall judge among the nations. My goodness, and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Do you see? Why are they beating their, their shears into pruning hooks? They are beating their spears into pruning hooks. You see, there's going to be a, an agricultural revolution here. I'm even beginning to see this now. The spirit of God in the heart of men will spark up an agricultural revolution. Because if there is no agricultural revolution, there won't be need to create pruning hooks. You want to prune the soil. You want to use the soil. You use pruning hooks to till, to carry out agricultural practice. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Especially at a time when Russia and uh, Ukraine are fighting. When Hausa and Fulani are fighting. When Nigeria is in the brink of uh, uh, Islamic takeover, that will be bloody. This is what the Lord said. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. My goodness. There is something important. There is something important. That wars we seize on the earth. And how does this happen? The mountain of the Lord's house is defined. Who is this mountain of the Lord's house? The habitation of God. And the place of influence that it finds itself. I'm talking about the church among the nations. I'm talking about those that are sons of God. Not people practicing Christianity. Christians, they, they, they believe that I am mad today. Even if I've been working in this particular interpretation for about eight years now. Christians don't understand this thing. I've opened it many times. And I'm opening it again as an important season of rest for me and my family. And I'm opening it, even right now. God has called us into a place where we will bring a new administration upon the earth. By ministry of his word, his spirit in us. He has sent us out to do this thing. If nations will not learn war anymore, it has to be by ministry of Christ in you. Christ in you is what I'm talking about. The spirit of God finding his habitation on your inside, setting you on the mountain. Why? So he can bring a new administration upon the nations. Beloved, this scripture, it appears to be reiterated in Micah. And I'll just go find that out. The Lord is making emphasis on the same prophecy through the two different prophets at two different times. We are going to find it is a prophecy that has been ascertained. It's something that will surely happen. You and I must begin to look at what God has emphasized so that we too 
can work in it. There's a greater opportunity. <clears throat> Micah chapter 4, verse 1. But in the last days, in the last days, when is the last days? We are in the last days. Since the Pentecost, since the, um, the Pentecost was fully come, and the Lord gave birth to his church by this same Spirit of God outpouring. I'm talking about the outpouring of the Spirit of God to leave Christ in the matrix. Since then, the last days began. Since God began to talk to the world through his Son, the last days began. And his Son is the product of the outpouring of the Spirit. That means when God has poured out his Spirit, his sons begin to talk to the world. I'm talking to a generation that is here to lead the nations in righteousness. I'm talking to a generation across the nations that is here to lead the nations on the path of righteousness. This is your time because we have entered a crucial season, July 17, 2022. As is the case with the 17th day of the seventh month, is a critical time for you to be awake to your responsibility. God establishes the mountain of his house in the last times, specifically to bring a new administration to cities. The generation that is awake to this is the culminating, at age culminating generation. This generation is the transition generation. And this generation, the chosen generation, prophetic generation, the church, that is wife that makes herself ready. Because we are ready to the extent to which we operate in these prophetic scriptures. There are prophetic scriptures open for us even today. It shall come to pass, makes it a pointer that this is the work that Christ will do. It shall come to pass his prophecy. And Christ comes to make the word made flesh. Christ comes to make the word tangible, physical, a physical reality. We are looking at the fulfillment of what shall come to pass. That's why Christ says, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Christ is talking about his second expression through his body. And this is the scripture that gives it a proof. In this scripture is the protocol for the manifestation of the body of Christ. The manifestation of the wife of the last man. This is the scripture here. Micah chapter 4. It is the same thing verbatim in Isaiah chapter 2. The same express statement, word for word. And we are seeing it. But in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the tops of the mountains. And it shall be exalted above the hills. Do you see? It's going back. It's going back. Do you see the Lord's house? Do you see the Lord's house? The ark? The Lord's house on the Mount of Ararat, Genesis chapter 8. And then the waters continue to recede. We are going further, but I'm just trying to put a pause there. But he's talking about other mountains. There are other mountains in the picture. Because he says it shall be exalted above the other mountains. And above the hills. That means there are mountains and there are hills. That the mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted above. Where is this captured? Let's, let me just go on to his, his, the next scripture. In Genesis chapter 8. Keep your fingers on, Mark, on Micah chapter 4. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 8. I want to re-establish um, where we are from Genesis chapter 8. And the ark rested in the seventh month, that's verse 4, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. I've established that, I've drawn that picture. Okay. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. So, after the, the ark rested on the mountains of Ararat, the waters continued to decrease. Let me show you. After the ark rested on the mountains of Ararat, right there, the waters continue to decrease until the 10th month. Look at the surface of the waters. Do you see the surface of the waters? The waters continue, continue to decrease until the 10th month. Then something happened on the 10th month. What is the 10th month? October. Okay, let's keep going. 
And the waters continually decreased until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains visible. In the tenth month, on the first day of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains, you see the tops of the mountains, visible. The tops of the mountain were made visible. The tops of the mountain were seen. Who were the people who saw it? it was, it's those people that were in the ark. You know, the ark had a window, and through, through the window, um, Noah sent out a raven to check if the earth was dry, if there was, a, there was dry land for them to st 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 uh, descend onto. The tops of the mountains were visible to those in the ark. Why was the top of the mountain visible to those who were in the ark? Because it is through the tops of the mountain that nations can be influenced. What am I talking about? Many people are talking about this seven mountain principle. The seven mountain of culture that defines the conditioning of cities. Media, education, government, entertainment, religion, um, family, and um, economy. Those are seven mountains that define the conditioning of cities. I'm in um, Calgary, CA, today. You want to know the conditioning of the city? Sit down and look at their TV. Look at their media. Listen to their news. You begin to know the forces that are governing the conditioning of cities. Look around. The media tells you so much that is acceptable by the people. The kind of food that they are eating. You will find it in the media. The level of infiltration of the kingdom of darkness in the land. You will find it in the media. The fear level. The oppression level. The oppression level, you can as much as draw a gradient, oppression and time gradient for the city if you carry out your statistics by the media. Through the media, generations are influenced. In Canada, this season is Pride Month. And in Pride Month, you see emphasis on the LGBT thoughts and the conditioning of the cities. You find that through the media. By the media, Preference for the way they dress is embraced. Preference for the way they talk is embraced. Preference for the things that they, their culture is embraced. Through the media, fear is propagated. And this is the same in any nation. This is the same in any village, any settlement. These seven mountains are what the forces of either good or, or, or evil flow to influence the city. They pump fear into the people. So when they pump fear into the people, the devil can destroy, can kill, can steal. Why? Because the people have accepted fear. What is God saying? On the tenth month, on the first day of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains were visible. There is an agenda on the media mountain. That's why God is showing the ark dwellers the tops of the mountain. Remember, we are city set upon the hill. What is the plan? Evangelists should come out of Zion and go and recondition the media mountain and cause the, the terms of righteousness to be accepted as the new norm. Instead of faith, there must be an exchange with fear. Sorry, instead of fear, I beg your pardon, there must be an exchange for faith on the media mountain. Let news be told so that people can have faith in the working of God. So, God can move. You see, faith and fear, faith is an antithesis of fear. When the devil wants to kill, steal, and destroy, he sends fear. When God wants to move, he sends faith. So, how do we sustain the move of God upon the nation? What is the move of God? The readministration of the cities. Do you remember Micah, Micah chapter 4? 
and many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord of the house, the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob. You see, there are two things the mountain of the Lord, the influence of the Lord. Let's go up. Let's climb on the influence of the, the Lord and the house of the of God. Let's go to where the Spirit is leading people. Let's go to where the Spirit has found a habitation for himself. And he will teach us his ways. So on the media mountain, people will come and learn the ways of God. What is the ways of God? What's the way to tell news? What's the way to do your music? What is the way? This is the job of the church among the nation. It's a governmental job. We want to, we are the light of the world, the light of the world. We are shining light to the world so that the things that the world will sustain will become works of light. How do we do it? Instruction is here. Do you see it from scripture? We are reading it from scripture. We are not blabbing here. This is the mandate of the church. And we will get to this immediately. We repent. We'll come out of what we have been doing that has not caused us to see these things. We must come out. Come out and embrace the rest. We have been laboring, trying to do this thing on our own. We must embrace the rest that the Father has given us. The Father has given us rest. We must embrace it so that we can come and start to do this job. The biggest job that God plans to do is national transformation. Nation building by the ministry of his word. And his word, the testimony of his word, is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy on your inside will cause you to be yourself, the testimony of the word. And what will you do? You will be the one to instruct nations on the paths of righteousness. You will be the one to issue out of Zion on the mountain. But you see, that's your ultimate inheritance. But before you get to that place, God causes you to see the tops of the mountains. I just took a look at the media mountain. We have six more. We have education. We have a government. We have economy. We have arts and entertainment. We have religion. And we have family. These are the seven control features, control systems that nations must check if they must embrace proper and true nation building. The conditioning of a nation happens through these seven mountains, the media, the education. Education talks about their school, their curriculum, the kind of teaching that they go through. The government, of course, government holds a, a very incredible power to determine the law, the administration of the law that the region or the nation goes under. It could be traditional laws. It could be constitutional laws. Every type of law, the government is saddled with the responsibility to interpret and maintain the law because the government i'm looking at the police force and all the systems that amounts for government parastatals ministries this is a mountain and this mountain has been left in the hands of the wicked the church from the mountain of the lord's house that is enjoying rest in july 17 right from now till the um tenth month the first day of the tenth month we have a period for us to Cause our eyes to see the place where God wants us to operate in. God has us. He has called us a prophetic generation. He has called us a chosen generation. He has um, spelled out our delineated, marked out our path, a prophetic path that we may walk in them. We are his workmanship created in Christ unto good works. Good works are works that have eternal significance. Good works are works that leave the brand of God upon them. Good works, much like the making of a, a beautiful car, a Toyota, um, a Toyota um, Camry, for example. After the Toyota company comes out with um, their, their make, they leave their brand on it. That's their logo. That's their own expression of good. What is good here? Good works. Their works 
that typify or demonstrates the ageless component of God's eternal spirit. When God created the heavens and the earth, everything, he looked at it and saw that it was good. His brand statement was upon it. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Let your light so shine before men that men may see your good works. Works that have the brand statement of God upon them. Works that are evergreen. They will last forever. Just like what you are hearing here. Come next 600 years and listen to this revelation. It is evergreen. He that finds a wife finds a good, 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 good thing. God has set apart marriage so that he will use to demonstrate his brand statement. Marriage, the finding of your wife, there is a brand statement because it has eternal significance. Beloved, we have been created as God's workmanship unto good works so that we may walk in them. God wants us to walk in this scripture. How do you walk in this scripture? You are the one that has found your rest on July 17. And from this place, God wants you to begin to look out for your inheritance. Between now and the, the, how many months is October 1? That's July, August, September, October. We're looking at just about three months. You, you have this period to see the tops of the mountains. God has given us a prophetic window of three months to see the tops of the mountains. I'm talking to a people who um, they have really not found purpose for living. God has opened the window in your fellowship with him for the next three months. He is going to give you a clear-cut plan on what he wants you to do to advance his kingdom in your territory. Did you hear me? For as many that are lost for what to do with their lives in Christ, I want you to recognize that there is a window, three-month window, for God to give you a clear-cut instruction in righteousness as to what he wants you to do on the tops of this mountain. So from July, the 17th day of July to the first day of October, there is an opportunity for um, um, evangelists to see what the Lord wants them to do on the media mountain. There is an opportunity for apostles and prophets to see what the Lord wants them. No, no, I think this is teachers. For teachers to see what the Lord wants them to do on the educational mountain. There is an agenda to bring truth-based education to the next generation in your community. So the Lord will be inspiring people on new curriculums that will be accepted in those regions. The plan is to bring truth-based education down so that those antichrist conditioning that we are seeing our children go under, especially in Canada here, will come to an end. Strategy to end the LGBT culture as legislated educational curriculum among First World nations. There's a three-month window that God has inspired teachers those that have been gifted with the right to teach the law of God, my goodness, the coming generation is open. We must begin to find ourselves in this place and pick it up. Um, for governments, this is the role of apostles and, and prophets. There is an agenda for uh, kingdom provocateurs to come out. They, these men are going to be like architects. They are going to be like... Um, idealists, people that will bring out new ideas for governing, for government. We have a three-month window, and we do this every year for these people to gather. They will come out to government so that they can remove, from the tops of the mountain, they can condition the government of territories of the earth. The same is the church. I'm talking as a general in the army now, and we're actually planning the strategy for the church among the nations. 
there's a there's a goal to see the tops of the mountain so that we can dispel the, the mountain top dwellers and begin to condition that mountain so that we can condition the cities in righteousness. We can bring judgment. There's an economy here, an economy specific about the work of the prophets. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be you shall prosper. Believe in his prospect. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in his pro prospect and you shall prosper. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is what the Lord has for prophets even at this time. Where we are talking about the fall of uh, the economies. We are talking about the cryptocurrency um, bubble. We are also talking about food shortage. All of them have everything to do with the economy of nations. This is the time for prophets to stand up and begin to prophesy the word of the Lord. And carry out prophetic activity that will secure the economy of nations. So that nations will recognize that there is no um, politician, no political um, philosophy can bring uh, lasting um, prosperity to the nations. All that we experience is inflation, hyperinflation, depression, and um, that will lead to um, agitation and chaos and rebellion and uh, arson, riots. Uh, all of which is the chaos that the New World Order has promoted in among the nations. But this is a, there's a vital call between July 17 and October 1 for, for, for prophets to come out of Mount Zion and begin to see where God has sent them to carry out. I'm talking to people across the nations today, and this is what social media has helped us to actualize. It's an incredible call that we're making. We are making the incredible call to people who feel that God has given them a body and they are now alive to run to run to see that this is achieved because they are good. Utmost. Their utmost is to look on the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, and nurture him. The goal is to nurture Yeshua HaMashiach on the earth and do the will of God. What is the will of God? That out of Mount Zion, judgment will go out into the nation. Judgment goes out into the nation when Christ compliant prophetic generation find their place at the tops of the mountains and then begin to instruct nations. We're looking at arts and entertainment. This is where the celebrity um, arrangement is. And this is one of the mountains that the enemy has worked on hitherto. He has influenced a generation of people on perversion, um, much decadent characters and behavioral tendencies. And this has to change because um, the behavior of um, your elites, your icons, entertainment icons, actually has a way to define the conditioning of the peoples in the nations. And that's where the church, all of us, that understands the fame of the Lord Yeshua, from apostles, from pastors, to teachers, to evangelists, to prophets, we have our role in the celebrity mountain so that we'll define the culture and conditioning of cities. We're beginning to see something now that the, our, our celebrities, especially in Africa, much of them are delving towards the practice of uh, um, their, their involvement with government. No, that, that is not the case. The case should be the church beginning to find her definition at the tops of the mountains so that we can now bring a new condition in upon the nations. The goal is the church. The biggest thing that God wants to do in the end time is done through his church. And when I mean church, I don't mean Christian church. I mean the people that have his spirit, the people that are keeping their testimony of the Lord Yeshua, the people that are keeping their record of the gospel, the people that are working and operating in this interpretation. I'm doing a powerful, powerful interpretation today. And we see um, the religion mountain for apostles and prophets. God is sending people to bring definition. For a time now, we have seen apostles that own churches. Today is a Sunday. It happens to be a Sunday. And then we see many apostles, especially in Nigeria, their own churches, family business, and they are collecting tithes from people. God is sending people from the act to bring a new narrative. An apostle is a sent one. He doesn't have anywhere where he gathers people. People are gathered somewhere and he's sent to them. That's the format. And this is why we must go and uh, dig, open this book. I like to do it at the last time, but it is something that the Lord is pressing that I do even right now. We must dig open these books again and find what God is saying about Trelawney. God is saying something about Trelawney in this book. It's the anointing that will release the territorial church. Until we understand 
that God has planned the church to be a territorial agency who continue to abuse his mandates, who continue to make um, a laughing stock out of his work. Religious mountain. God has a mandate. And all of us must prepare within ourselves to walk in this mandate. It is what God has set up for us to operate on. And we must walk in them. The last one is the family mountain. And that's expressive for the ministry of the pastor. There we have to raise the a godly generation because that's why God set up family. Excuse me. God sets up family so that he can raise a godly generation from generation to generation and so that um, the culture of righteousness can be molded and forged within the family units. You see, this system has been taken over under the working of the spirit of Antichrist. We have seen truth overthrown where you see people are not fit in their bodies. You see trans, trans um, gender culture, the LGBT culture. We see, and it's, it's nurtured in people's homes now. Um, um, I have some close family member who is a, a, a teacher at a creek. And we see that parents, even at the ones that dress their children with um, the opposite gender clothes, because they, they feel the children are... Um, are uh, individuals of the opposite gender. This is this LGBT conditioning, though it's a stronghold, demonic stronghold, is nurtured in the family. The same should not be the case when Christ reigns, when Zion begins to instruct the nations. And for Zion to instruct the nation, God established the mountain of the Lord's house on July 17. He allowed the water continue to recede. The water continues to recede to the 10th month so that from the from the ark, the law, the church that has developed a kingdom outlook shall see the tops of the mountains. And then the church begins to deliberate on how to solve this problem. So this king, this gospel of the kingdom actually has impact on these seven mountains from nation to nation. This is the agenda of ambassadors for Christ. That's why Apostle Paul says that we are ambassadors for Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says that we are ambassadors for Christ. God is through us, is calling all men back to him. We have a word of reconciliation to reconcile all these things. See that the, we are looking at in Acts chapter 4, times of refreshing, times for the sending of the Lord Yeshua, and times for the restitution of all things to the rightful owner. All these things must be given back to God. If the scripture that says, and the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdom of our God and of his dear son, is anything to go by, people must be awake to the responsibility as they are led by the Holy Spirit to enjoy the rest of God, to bring all these things back to the Father, dispel the enemy here, and enthrone righteousness on top of all these mountains. This is the this gospel of the kingdom that shall be preached. This is the age culminating me, uh, message that shall be preached in all the world for a testimony to the nations. You must be a part of the generation that is de deploying the authority of Christ, dispelling the principalities and powers in heavenly realms as soldiers of Christ, and moving in the advance of the kingdom of God on all these mountains. This is your agenda. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you must be awake to God's agenda for making you kings and priests unto God. God wants you to come on here and carry out the task. This is the ultimate task that the Father wants us to carry out. And it's by so doing, we'll be able to bring a new administration into the city. Back again to Micah chapter 4, as, as I'll, be, I'll be rounding up in no time. Let's go back again to Micah chapter 4 so that you will see this uh, thing. I just thank God for giving me the grace to see this revelation. Very powerful. Woo! Thank you, Father. Let's go back to Micah chapter 4. It says, it says, let me just read it again. It's reiterated Isaiah chapter 2, but uh, he reiterated it. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established at the tops of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into it. And many nations shall come and say, 
Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. That means God is going to instruct the world through the church. Do you see the picture again that I was painting just now? God is going to instruct the world and recondition the world through the ministry of the church. And when I'm talking about church, I'm not talking about Christian churches, Anglican churches, Pentecostal churches. No, that's the body of the beast. I'm talking about the people who have his spirit. The people whose hearts and bodies have become a dwelling place for the spirit of God. There's a sense of responsibility that will come alive in your heart because we have governmental job to do. What will happen? And he shall judge among many people and shall rebuke nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. You see the task? It's a national tax, a global tax that will bring a new administration upon the nations of the earth. That's what God has for us to do. That's what the rest of Christ is about. The rest of Christ is about the emergence of a new conditioning upon the earth. Is the God world order that will be done on earth. You see the Lord's prayer. This is it. This is the will of God. That the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. That is the plan. That is the plan. That is the plan. The plan is to reconcile the world back to God. So that at the end of the day, the angels will say, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. And the reign of Christ can now happen on the earth. And that's what we are about. The world to come where righteousness, justice, and truth has taken over. You want to do your best to read Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. You want to do your best to read again Micah chapter 4, verse 1, the same 1 to 4. Oh my God. One to three. There's so much that the Lord even says. You can continue to read the entire uh, books of Isaiah chapter 2 and Micah chapter 4. It spells out what God will cause us to do among the nations. But how did this start? It started when we have found rest. Everything started when we find rest rest when we have embraced this offer of rest that's what he gave to the church in the gentile nations rest from our struggles rest from the yoke of the enemy rest from the broken state that we have found ourselves because we have been running after self on that note i'll come to an end of today's recording today's live powerful july 17 live that typifies the importance the interpretation of what god actually wants to do this time to give us rest so that through us we have the ministry of his word shall hit the nations through us the administration of truth justice and righteousness shall happen among the nations this is why i am I'm bringing out these three books. I brought out these three books, published them. They are on Amazon. You want to do your best to read them because you see that plot that I showed just now. It came from the second book. The second book, the plot for the church, came from this book. Out that that um, this is a, is in the second book. So you want to read it and understand what the Lord is saying about the mandate of the church this end time powerful 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 it's a powerful powerful revelation here but you want to go to this go get these books you want to order them you want to ensure that you have eaten them so that when the work of the king god wants to deliver it 
he finds that you are ready you are ready to deliver the first one is a request for global domi do dominance this is a typically bible prophecy the, the next one is the message this gospel of the kingdom and the earthly reign of king yeshua hamashiach is the message and then this is the last one sheep the sheep and the, the goats we're actually talking about the, the the consequence of the preaching of the the message in this book there is what we want to achieve and it's the opportunity of having gospel church christ compliant states that the lord our king will call sheep who will inherit the kingdom in the world to come this is what the lord has shown to us he has given us i want um I, I really do not know how to do this, but I want, I, I feel like giving out these books. I feel like giving out these particular books. Whoever is there and wants to have a copy, we can facilitate. The first person to give me an inbox box message to tell me what he experienced. From today's ministration or you have any question that you want to ask i will work out how to give you the copies of this book um within the next month all right on that note i just want to say thank you to everyone that have joined today auntie aimee um architect odogu um for larry i see you bro um i just want to thank you for for joining and I, I want you to um continue to rejoice because scripture says with joy shall we draw from the wells of our salvation i put a blessing on your heart that the fields of your heart have become fertile for the nurturing development of seed that revelation that drops on your heart will begin to find grounds for um development but in due course god will, will the sower will put his sickle in your heart and reap harvest harvest of fruits harvest of revelation harvest harvest of programs will come out of your heart that you have found rest today from your struggles rest from your body you have found rest your heart has be has be, begun to interpret and understand the interpretation of government that um, Yeshua promotes with his gospel I, I put a blessing on you you are blessed when you go out when you come in you are blessed at your place of work you are blessed your heart is blessed your mind is blessed your body is blessed to be to be productive I, I, I just want to say that I, I love you for for joining today such an important day and then um, God's hand will continually lead us on the prophetic path. So at the end of the day, he will look, us at, will look at us and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Um, on this note, I want to say thank you again for joining. Until I see you again, and I hope we'll walk through this three months window where things are open before us to see what the Father is doing and to hear what the Father is saying. I hope we will have to talk again by the grace of God. Yes, we'll have to talk again and give God thanks for causing us to see these things and walk in them. Till I see you again, Shalom. I trust in you, Lord. I trust in you all the day long. Thank you for that glory. Mananatasa Ziadas. In your presence.
Yeah, mommy.